Hi, my name is Kira and I'm an Open Sciad teacher and facilitator. I'm here today to talk you through the first lesson of the Light and Matter Unit 6.1. Uh, we're going to go over some key moments in the lesson and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for helping this lesson go as smoothly as possible. So let's get started. All right, so at this lesson at a glance, we're seeing that this is an anchoring phenomenon lesson, which basically means that it's an introduction to the phenomenon that's going to drive our learning throughout the unit. This lesson takes about four days to get through, and there's quite a bit of prep required for this one, especially on day two, which is where we'll utilize the box models. So be sure to leave yourself enough time to get those box models set up. If you're using the banker boxes, um, then those box models take about 20 minutes to prepare each. So again, leave yourself enough time. Um, we will watch the video that's linked here a few times um, throughout the unit. And so it may be helpful to you to bookmark this link or to um, post it to your learning management system so that you can refer back to that uh, throughout the unit. All right, so we're seeing this lesson at a glance. We're looking at day one, um, and we notice that we're going to start introducing our puzzling phenomenon, which is our video. Um, students are going to watch the video a couple of times, record some noticings and wonderings, and then we'll share those out with the class. We're going to identify parts of the system. So we'll see in the video that there are a couple of rooms with people and lights. Um, and so we'll decide which of those elements are important or not important or we're unsure of. Um, and then we will use those, uh, those parts in our parts chart to develop a model, um, which we will then share with our partners. Um, and then we will motivate this need for um, making a scale model of the things that we see in the video so that maybe we can start manipulating things or looking more closely at them. On day two, we're going to uh, bring out the box models. We're going to map the box model to the video. So uh, we'll see that there are two rooms in the video. There are two rooms in the box and kind of decide what parts are there and what parts might still be missing. Um, we're going to carry out a box model investigation where we recreate this, the conditions of the rooms. And then we will share our observations from the box model investigation and navigate toward the next day. Um, on the next day, we are going to meet in a scientist circle, which is a routine that we will practice throughout the unit. Um, and we're going to develop some classroom norms. Um, and then once that's finished, we're going to develop an initial class consensus model using those diagrams from day two that we developed. Um, and then we're going to start brainstorming uh, related phenomena. When have we seen something like this phenomenon in our own lives? And we'll introduce this idea of a self-documentation collection, which I'll address in a little bit. On day four, we're going to write questions and create a driving questions board. Once we have our driving questions board created, we're going to identify um, ideas for investigation that can help move us through this unit. Um, and then we'll decide where to go next. And a lot of students at this point are saying that they're going to want to manipulate something about that box model and try to change some conditions to see what happens. All right, and so what we figure out is that on day one, uh, some materials can be reflective and see-through at the same time. So we're introducing this concept of a one-way mirror. Uh, day two, scientists sometimes use scale models to develop and test ideas for explaining phenomena. And then the material that is in there, um, we're noticing that whether a material is reflective or see-through may be related to where light is located. Um, and then on day three, developing a consensus model is a great way for us to record areas of agreement or disagreement in order to help us decide how to proceed in figuring out a phenomenon. And then on day four, scientists ask testable questions to guide their investigations. So let's dive into some of these key moments. Um, so on this particular lesson, we are introducing this concept of a one-way mirror using a video. So the video that students watch shows a student waiting in a classroom for his music teacher. And while he waits, he watches himself in the mirror. However, we learn that the mirror he sees is actually a window on the other side and the teacher is able to see the student and some of the goofy things that he's doing while he's waiting. Um, although the student is not able to see the teacher as well. Um, so we're going to watch the video a couple times. We'll record the things that we notice about the phenomenon and then things that we wonder about as we watch. 
In the next part of the lesson, we introduce this idea of systems thinking. We're not really going to name it that, but we also want to let students know that scientists use systems a lot. Um, so we want students to understand that there are things within this phenomenon that are working together to cause what we see happening. So together we're going to record what the parts of the system are, such as the rooms, the lights, the people, um, and then we'll determine whether those parts of the system are important for explaining why the student can see themselves and not their teacher, but why the teacher can see the student. Um, and then students will use this parts chart to develop a model that explains how the important parts interact to cause our phenomenon. So part eight actually occurs on day two of the lesson, and that's where we're utilizing these box models. Um, and that's where all that materials prep comes into play. So we're going to use the box models to recreate the rooms from the video. Students will make observations of the box model. They'll record what they see uh, with the light on in one room. We're also going to take a look at what we see when the lights are off in both rooms. Um, and we'll also disconnect those boxes so that students can kind of see the material that's between those two rooms a little bit more closely. Um, part 11 is where we will start day three. Um, this particular part of the lesson gives students an opportunity to participate in a routine that occurs multiple times throughout the unit and other units as well, and that's called the scientist circle. So students will assemble their chairs in a large circle. They'll bring their models and a writing utensil with them. Um, prior to discussing the models with their classmates, they're actually going to co-construct some classroom norms. So uh, there is a slide that shows suggested norms. There's also a handout students can be given. Uh, but the class is going to work together to add or revise any norms. Um, and we'll also choose a focal norm to monitor during this consen consensus discussion. So once norms have been established, students are going to share their diagrams, showing what's causing the phenomenon to occur with the rest of the students in the scientist circle. And as students share, the teacher is going to create a consensus model on chart paper that shows areas of agreement uh, within the class, and then maybe some areas where we're maybe kind of more uncertain. Um, and then during this discussion, an idea will probably surface that, um, that using lines or arrows is a good way to show what the people in the video were seeing and maybe even why they were seeing it. On day four, we begin the navigation to the next lesson by developing and sharing questions uh, that we have about our phenomenon. And that's gonna help us guide our learning throughout the unit. So students will develop um, their questions on sticky notes or note cards. And then as a class, we'll follow a protocol to develop a class driving questions board, also called the DQB, right on top of the consensus model. So we'll take that consensus model and we'll add our stickies or our note cards right on top in the section where it maybe applies the most. So following this protocol um, will help students to organize their questions into categories kind of naturally, um, which is gonna be helpful to us in the next part of the lesson. After the driving question board has been developed, students examine um, one of the categories that kind of naturally occurred um, more closely in small groups. So together, the students in these small groups will develop ideas that they have for how we could go about figuring out the answers to the questions within that category. Um, so they might suggest a simulation, they might suggest an investigation, maybe some research. Um, and as students share their ideas for investigation with the class, the teacher is going to record these on a public record uh, that we can refer back through uh, or back to throughout the unit. So it's likely that while students were investigating the box model, they wanted to change more than just turning the lights on and off. Um, so prior to moving on to lesson two, we're gonna brainstorm some ways that we could modify the box model, um, focusing on like what the one-way mirror material is like outside of the box, and then what would happen if we change the amount of light on either side of the box model. So let's get into materials management. Um, each box model, as I mentioned before, takes about 20 minutes to construct. So again, uh, it's really important to give yourself enough time to prep for the investigation on day two. Um, I would suggest watching the video, that anchoring phenomena video, a couple of times. In my class, I often have students watch it um, one time with pencils down, and then we watch it a couple more times while students are recording their notices and wonders in their notebooks. Um, and then again, students are going to want to change the light or look more closely at the material between the boxes. 
uh, during the box model investigation. So it's really important that you just have them follow exactly what they're like. They're recreating um, the phenomenon. And then there will be opportunities later in the unit for them to kind of manipulate the things in that box model. Um, so just encourage them to recreate the, the system first, and then we can modify that later. Um, one thing to think about prior to the lesson is how you want to develop your classroom norms. If you want to use the handout or if you want to use the slide, um, I oftentimes will make kind of a basic uh, norms uh, chart that has kind of those four categories. And then we will, as a class, develop the bullet points that go in there, how that looks and sounds in our classroom. It is completely up to you, but have kind of a plan before you get into that part of the lesson. Um, as students are developing driving questions, um, sometimes they struggle with this, especially since this is the first lesson of the middle school curriculum. Um, so you might consider using some resources that Open Syed has created. Um, those resources are a little tricky to find. They're actually, if you're using the Google Drive folders, it's actually in the Lesson 8 folder. Um, so there is one that's open and closed questions, uh, which is an asking questions tool. And then there's another asking questions tool about testable questions. So either of those might be helpful to you um, if your students are struggling. Uh, word wall wise, we're not adding anything to a word wall yet, but we are encountering words like one way mirror. Your students may call it like a mirror window or something like that, which is totally fine at this point. Um, we'll also introduce that concept of a scale model and the word norms. So poster management wise, there's quite a bit in lesson one because it's four days long. Um, so we will develop a class notice and wonder chart and that parts chart where we're seeing what's important or not important or what we're unsure of within that system. Those are both posters that are specific to this lesson. Um, but when you create your classroom norms, your initial consensus model, your driving question board, your ideas for investigation, and your related phenomena, those are all going to be posters that you will want to have um, student access to somewhere in the room or on your learning management system um, so that we can refer back to those in other lessons. Okay, that ends lesson one. I have enjoyed going through this one with you. I really hope this lesson goes super smoothly for you, and I'm looking forward to going through the remaining lessons with you in the future.